Namaste. So as we know, 29th March is a very special day. So I just thought that we'll read for this day the prayer of March 29th. 1914, which the mother writes in a diary. And uh, as we know, some of her prayers are not only just with date, but also the place. So what is beautiful is that in this prayer, uh, I think it must be the first time she writes, Pondicherry, March 29th, 1914. And I feel just the fact that she wrote the name of this uh, wonderful city, of course, she came and so the place becomes thrice blessed. But this itself becomes a blessing. And what does she write when she comes? This is before she meets Sri What she writes after meeting Sri is described in the next prayer, March 30th, 1914. But let us read what she does before she meets Sri when she reaches Pondicherry. Pondicherry, March 29th, 1914. O thou whom we must know, understand, realize, absolute consciousness, eternal law, thou who guidest and enlightenest us, who determinest and inspirest. So we see how the mother addresses the divine. She is not fixing the divine into a fixed formula. She is not calling him by a particular name. She is already freed from all the uh, you know, religious beliefs, non-belief systems. Of course, we can address him by any name. But the beauty is that she is addressing the divine in a particular way which goes beyond all religious uh, systems and philosophies that we are aware of. And if we look at all the great mystics, how they have addressed the divine, we will see something similar. So she, now we pick up the name and we address him with the name, which is alright. But the divine in his essence, in his truth, as has been experienced, by the great seers and the sages, she addresses him as, O thou whom we must know. He is the unknowable. There is no end to knowing him. So the moment we think we know of him, we are fooling ourselves. As the great Upanishad, Isha Upanishad says, Avigyatam vijanata vigyatam avijanata. They who think that they know him, know him not. And they who have not the thought of him, know him. Meaning thereby that you, we cannot know him by thought. We can know him only as and that much as he reveals himself. So, thou whom we must know, there is no limit to this knowledge. Understand, there is no limit to understanding him. It's only when he stands over us, over our heads, there is a beautiful uh, experience of the mother where she sees the divine as a little child dancing over uh, the human head and she says that it's a, a wonderful picture where the human head is filled with all kinds of restlessness and this child is dancing over the head, over the mind and uh, the whole mind is falling quiet as a result of that. So, she says, Thou whom we must know, understand. So, only when the divine Makes us understand, we can understand. Realize, not only we must understand, we must become one with him. This is what the realization means here. It's not enough just to admire, to adore, to worship, to appreciate, uh, um, to read. It's important for us to become one with him. So, so that something of his nature, that's what Sri Aurobindo speaks of in as Sadharma Mukti, something of his nature begins to reflect itself in our nature. Sadharmi Gati, Sadrishi Gati, Saloki Gati. So these are the different kinds of Mukti Sri speaks of in the synthesis of Gita, uh, synthesis of Yoga, where he speaks of uh, the various kinds of liberations that are granted to the integral Yogin. So Sadrishya Mukti, 
वन इन आइडेंटिटी विद द डिवाइन सायुज्य मुक्ति वन इन आइडेंटिटी विद द डिवाइन सादृश्य मुक्ति वन हु इज वन इन एवरी वे वेन इन अपियरेंस विद द डिवाइन साधर्म मुक्ति वन हुज नेचर बिगिन्स टू बी वन विद द नेचर ऑफ द लॉर्ड विद द डिवाइन नेचर एंड सालोक्य मुक्ति वन हु इज फॉर एवर डवेलिंग इन द स्टेट ऑफ द लॉर्ड सालोक इज नॉट जस्ट सिंपली गोइंग इन टू सम प्लेन ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस हाई अप लिविंग आर बॉडी हियर ऑन अर्थ एंड डवेलिंग देयर बट लिविंग इन द सेम स्टेटस ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस एज द डिवाइन मीनिंग देयर बाई लिविंग इन ए स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंट पीस जॉय सेरिनिटी ब्लेसिडनेस वंडर बीएटीट्यूड एंड ब्लिस एंड स्वीटनेस एंड लाइट एंड ऑल एल्स दाउ हो गाइडेस्ट no there is one more word absolute consciousness consciousness is everywhere and in everything everything is a play of consciousness this whole creation is the warp and woof of consciousness but there is the absolute consciousness where we see this consciousness in its ultimate absolute potency and power and purity and bliss and uh, wisdom whereas all other forms are a limitation of this one consciousness there is only one consciousness but it limits itself according to the form and the specific if we want to speak it or the plane of consciousness so the divine is the absolute consciousness while all of us are limited consciousness eternal law the law of truth the law of the unfolding of the divine truth what is called as sanatan dharma it is literally eternal law so it sanatan as we know is eternal and dharma is law so what is that law of truth which yagnavalk wants to see in the isha upanishad when he prays and aspires hiranmaye na patrena satya syapihitam mukham tattvam pushan pavranu satya dharmaye drishtaye the dharma the dharma of truth the law of truth that we want to see now we live by various kinds of laws most of them man made artificial they are product of our mind of our imagination of our society parental influence the country we are born in uh, and uh, our, the education our own thinking all these are various kinds of law or the rules of a certain society or external rules um, you know of a um, country wherever we are living in but there is a greater law the law of truth and that we must discover this law is not like a uniform dogma one for all but this law unfolds itself differently in different individuals at different stages of their evolution so that she is uh, asking for just like the great seer yagnavalk that thou who art the eternal law this law as we know is not a fixed dogma we must remember the divine does not say do this and don't do this and it's valid for all ages all times for all kinds of mankind it is this what makes an organized religion for each one he unfolds himself differently and uh, mother when she was asked about it she said yes the only word you can speak of uh, that comes closest to the divine guidance in life is um the eternal dharma the sanatan dharma because that is the only thing uh, which can partly comes close to this truth so she was asked then what is truth she said you cannot define it because the moment you define it you lose it so then what about how do we know it she said anyone who is sincere to know about it the truth itself will reveal and manifest itself in that person so it reveals differently in different individuals to some the same voice of truth may reveal in the form of uh, undertaking one course of action or one way of life to another it may uh, reveal itself in a very very different almost an opposite way to a buddha the law of truth reveals itself as someone who is moved by the suffering of mankind and to thereby move to sit in meditation to receive enlightenment but to a arjuna this truth reveals itself in the form of a heroic action and an action which is a ghor karma a terrible action as it is said on the battlefield of kurukshetra where he must confront those who are dear and near to him so this is the eternal law which he is speaking of thou who guidest and enlightenest us vainly we look for guidance and enlightenment elsewhere because it's always within us we carry the source of light within us we see that story of shri ramakrishna where somebody goes to different doors carrying a lantern 
and he says that I need little uh, fire to light up my hookah. You know, those were days when people smoked a hookah. So everybody says, no, I don't have, I don't have. The fire has been put off, it's too late. And suddenly one person says that, but you are always carrying this within you, with you, in the form of the lantern. So the light and the fire are there. We just need to turn towards that. Who determinest and inspirest. Not only he inspires us to action, but determines its fruits and the course. If we learn to surrender ourselves to the divine, not only will he inspire the action, but he has already decided upon what is going to be its result. That's what Sri Krishna tells Arjuna, that the result of this battle is predetermined. But you can have the privilege of being his instrument. We can say equally, that the result of this battle through which earth is going through now has gone through earlier and may yet go through later are already determined. The result of all these battles is the earth will move forward and forward and forward. There is no doomsday coming now. It is going to move and progress till it manifests the divine which is hidden in every grain of its sand. So this is the direction towards which the earth is moving. And um, this is already determined, but we have to be, uh, we must feel the divine inspiration and act in that direction. That's what is given to us. So she is praying, praying on behalf of all of us, grant that these weak souls may be strengthened. She must have felt all around that time, India fallen, subjected to various kinds of foreign domination. We had stopped believing in ourselves. Even now, we are still turning here and there and elsewhere and outside. We have stopped believing in, in our own Brahma Tej and Kshatra Tej, in our own spiritual energy. So she says, grant that these weak souls may be strengthened and those who are fearful may be reassured. Where does the assurance come from? It comes from her. It comes from the divine presence within us and that is the supreme security and the safety. To thee I confide them. In the same way as I confide to thee the destinies of all of us. So what we have to do, there are people who often say, oh we have relatives there, we have somebody known here and there and people are you know, right now in a <laughs> lockdown situation. And naturally they are worried about this and that and everyone. So what is to be done? We have to entrust them to the divine. By simple prayer offered at the feet of the divine, that divine mother, this person, that person, and through this and that person, through the whole interconnectedness of life, the entire earth and all its beings and creatures and its destinies, all of them I lay at thy feet with the supreme assurance that whatever has been offered to thee, Thou hast accepted and when you have accepted it, there is no other thing, no other destiny except blessedness and the divine victory. So this is what we have to do. This is what she reminds us on the March 29th, 1914.